do not own the music rights. Camille Shabazz here from Macadine University, hoping everything is well with you. Gonna go into my subject, which is all is fear and love and war. All is fear and love and war. I used to be one of them brothers that used to always quote that phrase. And I've heard many, I would say dozens of people over the last 30 years use that same phrase, all is fear and love and war. And when I used to say that many years ago, this letting it just run loosely off my tongue, I was always speaking from the point of view of all this fear in the love side. All this fear and love, but not fear in uh, war when it came to my personal self. You know, as long as I was the one in pursuit, as well as the one that may be even causing war, I was the one comfortable in using that phrase. But you would never understand that phrase until you're on the opposite spectrum of the love part and you're experiencing the war aspect of that phrase. Now, back when I used to always say it, I never really looked deep into the origins of the phrase. I used to think that maybe Shakespeare said it in one of his plays. But after I experienced the war aspect where I was on the side where the bad was happening, the undesirable things were happening, I said, well, I think I better check this out a little more deeper. So the phrase came from an author named John Lilly. And what's crazy about this phrase is that it's 456 years old. So many have been quoting it through the centuries, like Lord Byron, I think even Ernest Hemingway, and different other poets and writers always seem to bring that phrase into their books or even in movies. However, once again, you don't respect it until you're on the side and the spectrum of the war side where you're experiencing the heartache aspect of the phrase. Now, the book that it was originally in was called The Anatomy of Wit. The Anatomy of Wit, where it was dealing with romance from a, um, a story or novel perspective. But the meaning of all is fear in love and war means that anything goes on both sides of that spectrum, as I was just saying. However, once again, that war side, when you experience that, it's a real serious situation that could end in all types of chaos, even murder. So when I first became experienced with the war aspect coming upon myself, which has been various times, however, the worst time that I can recall where that phrase was not only taking place in my life, but the actual phrase was written to me in a letter by someone that I was formerly seeing. And the period of time when this woman sent me this phrase was when I had the unfortunate, well, you know what? The fortunate event of going to jail for six years. And you might say, well, why is that fortunate? Because if it wasn't for me going to prison for those six years, you, this book would never have been written. I had to go through some love and war and the casualties of war in order for me to bring out the best in myself as it happens to the best of us. You know, heartbreak and pain, it could make you or it can break you. But in my case, I used the best or brought the best out of myself. And as I was saying, 
I got a letter from a sister that I was seeing before I went away. And it was quite over even before I went in. But we had sort of remained friends with that potential of romance taking place down the line. But you know how it is when they say uh, absence make the heart grow fonder. But too much absence makes the heart weak. So down the line in our correspondence, we got into a little debate slash argument, which was the opportune moment for her to bring that phrase up in a letter to me, which was actually the last letter as she went on in pursuit of a new relationship and eventually a husband and, and, and children. And I'm happy for her that she did that. However, when that phrase hit me, where we was, when she was going through her little emotional tirade, and at the end she said, remember, all is fair in love and war. I said, well, God damn. What a time and place to hear such a phrase. Right in the beginning stages of my six years in prison, I get this from a much younger and unseasoned woman on top of that, teaching me a lesson in love and war. And for those of you who are players who are out here playing around and, you know, uh, using the psychological warfare on these so-called innocent women and on the flip side men you know that down the line it's gonna face you you're gonna come in contact with the same shit that you're dishing out and what they say is um the old saying is you can give it but can you take it because one thing i learned the hard way as a lot of brothers that i Council has learned the hard way is that there are no rules of engagement when it comes to love and war. There's no, no checklist of things that you can do and can't do. When the war aspect is declared on you from your ex-significant lover or whoever, there's no rules. You can't say, well, you can't do that. Or I wouldn't have done that. It doesn't go like that. All is fair in love and war. Bottom line, simple as that. And when it hits you, you got to make sure, hopefully, that you're inoculated or you got your bulletproof vest on because it's going to be a serious hardship. Very serious hardship. And we talk about love and war in the Macadine and how to inoculate yourself first and foremost from even engaging in that type of mentality. You don't even want to be a part of all this fear and love and war because it's a deadly game. It's a damn deadly game. And once again, there is no rules to the engagement when it comes to love and war. Because love, the, uh, not the agape love, but that worldly love that everybody falls into and out of overnight. Number one, is not even real. It's illusionary. It's temporary. It's fleeting. But when someone is under the spell of so-called love, they'll do anything to get it. They'll do anything to stay in it because of the intoxicating effects of that fake love. But agape love, which is that pure love, the love that the mother has for a child, which is really rare to ascertain. That's the love. If you're going to be into any kind of love, which really shouldn't even be called love, that would be the so-called emotion you would want to delve in, which really is the love of yourself. Because once you love yourself essentially and authentically, you don't have to worry about those who are out here on the lower plane trying to suck you into their vortex or traps. So with all that being said, all is fair 
in love and war, especially in this day and time. And no one is really exempt from the possibility of being slaughtered by it. So with that being said, just be mindful because it's a dirty and it's a deadly game. And I'm hoping that you don't be of those who succumb to it. More later in peace.